This video will show you how to take a list that you would like to turn into a navigation bar and have it set up horizontally. There are more detailed instructions in the reading that I assigned and um, that reading I believe is in lecture 5 but just have a look through the different lectures and you'll see something about making a navigation bar from a list and that would be in the styling with CSS book. So I will do a quick rundown of it and then more details on how to get things to behave well and all that is in the book. I have right now a, a now well, I have a, an unordered list with four items. I have a header two before the unordered list. All of this is contained within a nav element with an ID of main navigation. And I've shown in a previous video one technique for sending text off the page. I'm going to show you another technique in this instance to work with the nav bar when I don't, I don't need anything visually to show up for this H2. Okay, so all I want is for that to, I want that text to be there, but I, for the, for the outliner and for uh, search engines, but I, I don't need it to be there for any other reason. There's nothing that needs, no one needs to know it exists. So I'm going to create a class that I can apply to items such as this, because I may have other unordered lists throughout the site that I might want to do this to. So um, I have it selected at the moment, but you know what? I'm actually going to deselect it. I'm just going to create a class. So uh, I'm going to do a new CSS rule, create a class, and I'm going to name this um, a, a display dash none. And it's pretty straightforward. I don't want whatever it is if I apply this class to it to display. So I'm going to go to block and I'm going to choose display of none. Apply. Okay. So the class has been created and it simply says display of none. And the class is named dot display dash none. And I would like to apply it to this particular H2. So I have selected the H2 in my tag inspector. I'm going to right click on it, set the class, and in this case I only have one class to choose from and that's a display of none. Now it's just, it's not there. It's not that I've sent the text off the page and I still have the H2 that I can apply a height and a width to. That's different. That, I demoed that in the previous video. But in this one I just flat out do not want that H2 to show up at all. So that's another way of dealing with this. Now, um, how do I get my list, because your nav bar needs to be an unordered or ordered list, how do I get this to display horizontally? So I am going to start out with my UL and I am going to assign the UL within main navigation um, if you happen to have more than one UL in your, well, you wouldn't in this. This is fine. It wouldn't be in there. Okay, good. I was going to say if we needed to do an ID, we could, but in this case, this is the only way it's going to be. So I'm going to click on my UL, like I did a moment ago, new CSS style, and I am going to say to this, uh, for this rule, that I would like it to in order for the UL box to hold the LIs, I'm going to have it float left. And this is a slightly different technique than what was covered in the, um, in the uh, reading. Um, but I'm going to have it float left. And for the moment, just for demonstration purposes, I'm going to give it a background color. I'll give it a background color of light gray. And then I'm going to select an LI. Again, I'm choosing LI within the UL within an ID of main navigation, making sure it goes into the navigation demo CSS file. And I am also going to have it float left. I will give this a background color that's a little darker. Now it's not showing up here that anything has happened, so Let's go out to Firefox and have a look. And there we go. Now we can't read the items. 
hold on, let me just adjust a couple things here. We can't read the items at the moment because it's um, it's it's a dark font and a, you know a dark background color. So let's go ahead and change that. I'm double clicking on the rule to change it, and I'm going to set a font color of white. Preview in Firefox, and now we at least have that happening. And um, we have bullets showing up. We have things all smushed together. So there's a lot of stuff to fix here. So I will go to this LI and I will go to list and I will say a list style type of none. And when I save all and preview in Firefox, now the bullets are gone. And I'm going to double click on that rule again. And now I'm going to give each um, LI, I'm going to give it padding all around it. Now you can have unique padding. So for the top, I've decided I want 10 pixels. And the bottom, I'm going to give it 10 pixels. And the right and left, I'm going to go ahead, just for the sake of showing you that you can do different things, and give them 20 pixels on the left and right. And now we're starting to get what looks like a nav bar. But nothing, there's, these links don't go anywhere yet. So um, I'm going to set these to go to different places. And now, if, if this were a real project and I were sending these to go not to actual pages, in my site, but I'll, elsewhere I would set this to a target of blank. It's a demo, um, so I'm just I'm just trying to set these two things. Um, I'm going to set this one to go to another demo page in my site, just so we have them linking to somewhere within the site. And um, why don't I have that one also go to somewhere within our, my little site files here, and then this one will have go just so it's a link is all I'm after here. Again, Amazon.com, that's an external link from my site. I would normally choose target equals blank, but for the sake of the demo, I'll leave that out. It doesn't matter right now. And now we have, um, we have a nav bar, but we have, so we can see that some of these have been visited and some of them haven't been. They're all different colors. So we need to style our links, which I've covered in another video. I will do this quickly for you here. I'm going to target just the links within this nav bar. So I'm going to click on um, my snakes here, and um, <laughs> that's the fourth one in. So I'm on this A. I actually have the A tag highlighted, and I'm going to click a new rule, and now, I've got compound chosen, but I'm going to modify things just a little bit here. If you go back to the lecture on pseudo classes, this would be the first pseudo class for the links. I'm going to say, so this is, the, these rules will only affect the links, the anchors that are within this particular section of the site. These will not affect anywhere else. And I'm going to say a link, and I'm going to have a text decoration of none and um, a font color of white and I'm going to say that since these are in the nav bar maybe I want them to be 14 point and um, say apply so I have that in place now I'm going to modify my I'm going to go to my CSS and I'm going to modify what I just did so I have a link and I'm going to do a comma and then a visited. So I have this whole rule repeated. I have a comma. And then I have the whole selector. I shouldn't say it's a rule. I have the whole selector repeated. So if it's a link that hasn't been visited or it has been visit visited, I want it to show up as white. I'm going to copy this whole block here. And I'm going to next set a rule for when the mouse rolls over it. And when 
we are in the active state. I'm going to leave the color as white. I'm, I'll just go over here for this. I've got it selected here, which makes it selected over in the CSS Styles panel. And I'm going to double click on this and just give this a background color. We'll do some really obnoxious background color just so you can see the actual size of the link itself, which will be different than the um, LI. Now, really, there's a lot of different scenarios that are going to come up. This is just a be very beginning approach. You can put background images on your list items. Um, you can put a background image on the overall UL. You can give each one of these um, links their own ID and if you do that then you can set up uh, sets of rules for each one of these like you could say okay well if you're um, you know, if you if you're an ally with an ID of a fish then you get a different background image I mean you'd have to do that to every one of these so every everyone here would have to have fish and again pound fish and this is just if you want to do something unique to each of the links. So this, so now I have this set here, and if my fish actually had an ID of, where are you? The LI actually had an ID of fish. Now the rules that I just put in place would only affect that particular link. So maybe I want that to have, so this is the only one that's white and got a highlight. Maybe I want that to have a background image. Um, you know, there's a, there's a lot of different scenarios in here. There's a lot of ways, like, I, you know, we could, we could end up applying the width and the height to the A instead of to the LI. There's a lot of different things we can play with. And I can help you with those individually in class. But I just want to get you guys started so you have an idea of where to go and then you can start playing with things from there. And also follow through with that reading and look at what's recommended in what he recommends in there. Now he will have you in the reading do something different. So I just want to warn you on one thing. He will have you set um, your, instead of having your list items float left, he will have them set to a display of inline. And so I, I prefer to float mine left and, I, and then I have the UL float left as well so it holds them and then I put them in uh, you know wherever they need to go. Uh, the inline thing, you know, that that is slightly different. If I help you, I will probably change everything over to a float left, so you know ahead of time. Um, let's go ahead and make it so that all of the list items have this rollover effect, and that means I'm going to change these rules so they do not target just the fish <laughs> li. Well, actually, they're targeting the A within the LI. So we're going to get rid of that. And we're going to preview in Firefox. And there we go. So these all have that effect now. And, okay, so one more thing since we're here. I'll just change out one little thing. Earlier, I had the um, LI have the padding and and for everything. I'm going to change that. I'm going to cut that out of the LI and I'm going to apply it to the A's instead. So that way that background color you might have noticed here, that background color is just, it, it's like, well, okay, if you want it just on the word, great, but most of the time you're going to want it on the overall thing. So by applying the padding and your width and height to the rules to the, to the rules that are, are selecting the A's within the LI, um, you get this effect. And it all depends on what you're trying to accomplish and what type of rule you have here. So now we have this happening. And um, I think what we're seeing here too is that really dark color that is on the LI here. And we probably need to apply a height to the LI. So let's see, we have that and we'll just uh, measure that out, figure out what that is. So 
So we're saying, okay, that's our, that's, this, this is how big we want our, um, our LIs to be. So we're going to go to window and info, and we're saying that we want them to have a height of 29. So in here, okay, now that's just to the LI so that we get rid of this effect of them busting out of here. And there's a bunch of ways to handle this. I'm just doing this quickly so you can start to see like, oh, I can, I can do things to this. Um, and this color is only on rollover. So I could I put a background image um, on rollover for each, you know, for, for, the, for the nav if I wanted to instead of a background color, I could. Um, again, you could set up individual IDs for each one of the items and you could set up a set of rules for each one of the items and have them have a different image showing, you know, there's all sorts of things you can do here. Um, I can come around and help you with that. You, your neighbors can help you with it, but this is the most basic uh, nav of all. It's just text and I'm giving it a background color. You don't need to have a background color. You could just change the text itself. I just want it to be obvious in the demo. So that is the beginnings of setting up a nav bar. And in some cases, this might be all you need to do. It just depends on what you've set up. Um, oh, one other thing, since we're here and I've seen some of you do it and it's occurring to me as I'm talking this out, um, you might want to have dividers. So let's go ahead to this first rule here that says, you know, it's got the A link, A visited. I'm going to select it here, which then highlights it over in the CSS styles. So if I wanted a border, if I wanted a line on the right hand side, I'm going to go to border and I'm going to deselect same for all. And um, I'm going to do a solid uh, one pixel border and we'll make it white, white, not gray, and apply. Yeah, that should do it. Now, what you can't see is that this also, here, I'll make it a different color. is that there's a red border over here as well and maybe you don't want that. So for that particular list item we need to you know like set up an extra ID in here or a class or whatever might be appropriate. Um, in this case I'm just going with an ID. I'm assuming this is a unique instance and I won't have to um, worry about it or, or you know what I'm going to contradict myself here. I'm going to go with class because I can think of a number of reasons why I might want to use this in other places. So no right border. So I'm setting up the class first, unlike before where I set it up last. So I'm going to take the name that I gave the class, I'm going to copy it, and right now nothing's happening. This is still the same. I still have that right border. And um, I'm going to create a new class. And I'm going to start out with a dot and paste in what I named it down here. And then I'm going to go to border. And uh, I am going to say right border of none and a width of zero. Apply, okay. And now this little red line should go away if we did it correctly. Hold on, class, no right border. Let me check this and just make sure we have that. Let me pause for just one second here. Okay, so right now our this is not going away, that border is still there, even though I have a class of no right border. The reason is I have the class applied to the LI, but the rule that's making the border happen is on the, um, on the A itself, not on the LI. So I can do one of two things. I can say that 
um, I'm going to take that class or, or the the, the um, rule here and change it where I'm going to take this border information and I'm going to apply it to the LI instead of the anchor and that should take care of it. The other one would be to take the class and apply it to move the class from from here from the LI onto the A but this this will be fine. So we now have this list item and it has the border information in it. We have a class no right border saying a border with the zero and a border right style of none and the class has been applied to that list item. So we should be in good shape now. Well, we still have our border. So why is that? Well, I just applied a class, not thinking about what my previous rules were. My previous rules are pretty specific. I have main navigation, UL, LI. Okay, that is a that's very specific. It's talking about a lot of things here. We haven't talked about specificity yet, but there's a lot telling the browser. It's very very specific, and this little class down here isn't. It's just a class, and it it's not. And when we get into specificity, this will make more sense. But the ranking system, uh, this rule will override this rule down here because it's not specific enough. So to fix all this, to get rid of our border. I'm going to make this class very specific. I will have main navigation, UL, LI, and no space in here. And then there's the name of the class. So we have li dot no right border. Save, refresh in browser, and now the border is gone. So there's putting a border in your list as well. And with that, I'm going to leave all the other scenarios to uh, in class questions.